Hey guys, welcome to today's training package. My name's Sam, I'm a paramedic with Real Response, and today we're gonna to be looking at femur fractures, in particular mid-shaft femur fractures and traction splints. So we're gonna include an overview of the anatomy of the femur, and then also some causes of fracture. From here, we're then gonna look at some discussion around the epidemiology and pathophysiology of mid-shaft femur fractures. Then from a pre-hospital point of view, we'll look at the, some of the signs and symptoms that we're gonna see with the mid-shaft femur fracture. And then also some of the treatment that we do at both an advanced and a basic life support level. So traction splinting is a really important part of this treatment. So we're gonna focus on that. We're gonna look at both the CT6 traction splint and the CT7 traction splint. I'll demonstrate both of these and then I'll do a bit of a comparison between the two. Finally, we'll have a comparison between the traction splint use in both the civilian and military environment. If we look at the anatomy of the femur now, the bone is located in each thigh of the body. It's the longest and strongest bone in humans, and it carries the entire weight of the body. It's also the heaviest bone and requires a high energy of force to break it. The function of the femur is to serve as an attachment point for all the muscles that apply their force over the hip and knee joints. In all, there are 23 different muscles that either originate or insert into the femur. By supporting these muscles, the femur acts as the principal load-bearing bones. Running parallel with the femur are also large arteries and veins, the largest of these being the femoral artery. This makes the thigh a highly vascular area. The femur also has other functions within the body. It's involved in something called hematopoiesis. This is the formation of blood cellular components. So within the femur, there is its narrow shaft and inside that is bone marrow. And so in this bone marrow, it contains stem cells and these contribute to the production of blood cells. So this only occurs in children, so anyone sort of under the age of 20 years old, um, they have this hematopoiesis. However, once we're older, we become adults, this occurs now in other bones, such as the pelvis, cranium, vertebrae, and sternum. If we look at now how femur fractures occur, they result from a significant force is typically sustained from a high impact trauma. These are things such as car or motorcycle accidents, falls from a significant height, or something such as a gunshot wound. We can also see femoral fractures in low impact trauma in elderly patient groups as these, these patients are much more fragile and the bones can break much easier. It also occurs as a pathological fracture. Now, pathological fracture is a fracture that results from a disease rather than from trauma. So an example of this might be something like osteoporosis, which weakens the bones. So the femur may fracture in many different places. It may fracture at the proximal end or the neck of femur. It could fracture in the middle, which would be the shaft, or it could fracture at the distal end, which is towards the knee. So fractures of the middle of the femur are managed differently from those that are at the head, neck, or knee of the femur. So here we can see a few different fractures. We've got a mid-shaft femur fracture, which is the first one. As we can see, the bone's broken right in the middle and the two ends are coming together. A proximal femur fracture is the second X-ray along, and that's where the fractures occurred up towards near the hip. Uh, a distal femur fracture is the final picture there, and as we can see, it's further down towards the knee. 